Today we're going to be looking at a video by Mumbo Jumbo, specifically how to make a nuclear reactor in Minecraft. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Reactors go pretty high on that list. I mean, from an engineering standpoint, they are incredibly impressive. There's loads of difficult engineering going on in there. Just they tons sure of bits are and impressive. pieces that I personally <laughs> don't fully understand. And also, of course, on a scary standpoint, they're pretty impressive too. I mean, I know it rarely happens, but when a nuclear reactor explodes, well, you certainly know about it. I mean, it caused- That is true. You know about it a lot more than, say, in an oil refinery or a factory or a coal power plant, because people are just afraid of them. It's not any more dangerous. In fact, it's actually less dangerous, far less likely to have deaths from nuclear power as opposed to coal or natural gas. But he's right that people fear it. Doesn't make any sense though. A huge explosion also covers the entire surrounding area in radiation, which stays there for thousands upon thousands of years. I mean, that's impressive. And that- Not necessarily. Usually an explosion is contained in the reactor containment building. Containment buildings are designed to withstand explosions. Now Chernobyl, they just didn't make a containment building. That was their big design flaw. One of many design flaws there. It very cool. Now, unfortunately, in Minecraft right now, we do not have nuclear energy and we don't have nuclear reactors. But I thought it'd be a fun redstone project to work on. So let's begin. So the first thing that I've done is created this 15 up by 15 up by 10 block deep bunker that drops down into the ground. Now, I decided to use iron blocks for this one just because I feel like they look cool. reinforced and industrial. And that's the sort of thing that we want to be going for here because, of course, we're building a nuclear reactor, okay? You don't have, like, pretty wood and leaves and things like that in a nuclear reactor. Nope, you have iron, you have, like, redstone hard-looking blocks, and that's what we're going to be going for here. True, just like any industrial facility, you're going to have that. Though, nuclear power plants are often on nature preserves because they're located far away from populated areas. So, yeah, might as well have a wildlife preserve. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the control rod system and I'm going to start that off down at the bottom. So I'm going to go three blocks in on either side. So that's going to be around about there. And I'm going to place a sticky piston every block just like this. And then I'm going okay. to do the same thing going across right here. So just like that. So we're going to create a four by four area of sticky pistons just all facing upwards in this sort of grid formation. And then on top of those sticky pistons, we're going to place yet more sticky pistons and then on top of those sticky pistons, we're going to place in the slime blocks and also these black stained glass box just like this. Now these are all going to be the control rods which essentially cool down the nuclear reactor. They stop it from overheating and exploding. So these are pretty important. All control rods are used to uh, regulate reactor power and reactor temperature. And control rods can be uh, fully inserted in less than two seconds to shop to uh, shut down a reactor safely. Explosion prevention isn't the word that I would have used, but sure. <laughs> so it looks like he's at least laying them out evenly. These are now looking lovely. So we're going to chuck in all of the redstone across the bottom, just powering all of our bottom sticky pistons, because if you haven't quite guessed yet, we're creating double piston extenders at the bottom here. So all of this redstone needs to power all of those. Then on top, we're going to have our removable objects. I'm going to be using obsidian because once again, these need to look obsidian. like solid industrial blocks and something about obsidian just looks really rock solid. So I'm going to place in all of them. So, okay, it looks like this is all just going for the aesthetics is what one would look like rather than one that's functional. So this doesn't look like that same nuclear craft mod that looked at a while ago. If you're interested in seeing my reaction to that, I'll pin it down in a comment below. But here it looks like we're just going mainly on look. And then on top of all of those, we're going to need our redstone in once again. So that's just going to make its way round. That's looking lovely. <laughs> and also our double piston retraction, which looks... Moves them nice and quick. Uh, it's very... Looks like uh, they can either do a reactor trip or the opposite of a reactor trip where you move them all out. <laughs> and for the purpose of the game, a simple illustration, that's cool. It could be one of those trigger pulse reactors that you do, that people do experiments on where you do rapid control rod withdrawals for very important scientific research. Do not actually do this sort of thing on a commercial nuclear power plant. There's a lot more energy in this, but this thing is small enough that it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And 
<laughs> awesome when they're all in sync just like that. And that is the bottom layer of our control rods all fully functional. Now it is time to place in the fuel rods. These are the actual uranium which is going to cause our nuclear reactor to work. So put on your hazmat suits, make sure that you're all safe and sound before you start touching this stuff because otherwise, you know, it can do some truly terrible things to you. That's actually not true if it's fresh fuel. Um, fresh fuel you could touch, you could touch and it would be 100% fine. Now spec fuel, that has the fission products from uranium in there that could give you some dose. Now how you would actually put it in there is the whole thing would be underwater. You move the fuel in safely above it using cranes. And they're not actually wearing hazmat suits. They're wearing protective clothing so they don't get contaminated. In this case, you might see some of these guys wear uh, life vests if they're not gonna be on the central platform. The biggest hazard up there is falling off and drowning, not the actual radioactive material, even from spent fuel pool. Now, if you were to swim down there and bear hug a fuel assembly, don't do that. That's gonna get you some nasty dose. These guys don't really need to worry about dose. We're going to place three blocks in, going upwards like that. Those are all our uranium blocks, and they are going to make their way across. I can tell he's going for artistic thing because everyone thinks uranium is this green glowy stuff. It's it's not. It's it's metallic -y fuel assemblies just like you saw in that picture ago. Just like this in this sort of formation and we're going to create a grid of them in between all of our control rods. So when it's interesting that he's stacking fuel above the control rods. It's it's the other way around. Not to say you can't, that this sort of thing is impossible. They need to be able to fall into the bottom and uh, electromagnetic system that holds the uh, rods in place, they detach, they fall in, the reactor shut down. Here, piston mechanism to launch them upwards, which could fail. Gravity is not going to fail. This is a more risky design that you see here. This redstone crosses, essentially, where we have this sort of cross going on, that's where uranium is going to be going. That's where it's going to be popping in, and that means that when we extend our control rods, they will essentially pop up in this area in between our fuel yeah, rods, backwards. which are the uranium or the emerald blocks, and that means they should end up looking pretty cool. In fact, I'll quickly demonstrate to you how it looks. So we do this, and then look, they all extend between, and it looks nice, or at least I think it looks nice. So what you have to do is you have to fill in that full grid, look cool. take it right the way out to this area right here, and it should end up looking pretty cool. So obviously we've got the bottom control rods and we also have the nuclear fuel rods which is pretty good going so far. I mean, I would say that the development of this has gone considerably faster than the development of a real nuclear reactor, so I suppose that's a positive for now. Give you a sense of a real nuclear reactor. Six years is generous. More like 10 plus uh, for Vogel units three and four from actual groundbreaking phase of construction to commercial operation. That's been going on since 2013, it's 2023 now. And it takes even longer if you count the bureaucratic, administrative, permitting, licensing, all those steps it takes even more years before ground is even broken for the construction site. I'm going to start work on the top control rods and to do that I'm going to place oh, top three control rods this, and then a glowstone across there. So maybe his vision is control rods on the bottom, control rods on the top, and fuel is the little meat of this sandwich. That's very different. Uh, <laughs> so I guess he's, so I guess he'll have some margin, but it just makes a lot more sense for the control rods to all be in one thing. It'd be much easier system to operate. That we're going to place a line of glowstone going right the way above all of our control rods. So there is the bottom control rod, and this one lines up with it perfectly, and this one lines up with it as well. All of our control rods are retracted, and we get full nuclear reaction happening, which means yeah, I, I probably shouldn't be standing here. I mean, I'm clear. <laughs> no, you do not want to stand there. You're going to get some nasty neutron dose while the, while the reactor is operating. <laughs> not to make, well, the heat's going to kill you faster than the actual radiation, but you would get a lethal dose from that. Pretty easily. I could just say this is a little experiment that you would see at a uh, at a university or maybe a national lab or something like that. This is probably closer to that. Not in the correct safety gear. This is very, very bad for me. Safety gear is not going to help you from if you're that close to an operating nuclear reactor. I'm sorry to say. So the actual nuclear reactor itself is pretty much done. I mean, that's it. That is a simple mechanism that we have just created right there. The control rod system is all in place. And so now what I'm water? doing is I'm working on the water area. Because for those of you who don't know, most nuclear reactors basically work by heating up and then that heats up water, 
The water then evaporates, turning into steam, which travels through a turbine, which spins that turbine, generating power. So now what we have to do is actually create- 100% accurate. The only thing, only difference is uh, nuclear power is just a fancy way of boiling water. The water holder, and then we're going to place in all of the redstone up at the top here. And one thing that I will just say is, as you guys know, water and redstone do not mix particularly well, okay? Make sure yeah, that you're your gonna water, need water in the actual reactor to get it to work, buddy. And just completely <laughs> destroy your redstone build because, well, then you're in for a pretty bad time. But now I'm just going to cover this thing up, leaving a 3x3 three three hole in the center. Just one thing to mention, for those of you who are building at home, the ends of your water holder should match up with the ends of the emerald blocks or your fuel rods. In that arrangement, the water's not doing anything for them. It's not even touching the, uh, the nuclear fuel, so it's not transporting heat and it's not moderating any neutrons. What it, well, it's maybe giving him a little bit of shielding from, like, standing above there. I'm gonna assume his character is immune to radiation and heat somehow, or the thing's just turned off. Other than that, it's, it's not doing anything for you. So that should line up with the ends of your control rod, so hopefully that should give you a rough idea of the size of this thing. But anyway, now what we're going to do is we are going to take a pipe output from this thing, and we're going to take it up by six blocks. So that is one block right there, so one block of the pipe, two, three four five six and that's going to run up to the top right there and we need to do that on all four of the sides next up in the center of our pipe we're going to be placing in the various different fans and things that we're going to have in here so we're going to have one fan there we're going Fans, to grab huh? another block and we're going to create another fan in a slightly different position and then the final fan up at the top right here. Now, obviously, you are going to have to use some imagination on this one <laughs> because, well, they just look like crosses and X's and things. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that's probably a good start. So there's no fans in a steam generator making a steam generator that hovers above it. Just the heat from the reactor coolant system interfacing with the water of the steam generator just boils it and sends and is going to send it up. Now, there's really powerful pumps, both on the primary side pumping the reactor coolant and on the secondary side pumping feed water into the steam generator. It's to the point where you have so much force in there, so much energy. Fans in the steam generator? Completely unnecessary. But I think he's, for the purpose of visualizing it in this analogy, I can see why he's going with something that is supposed to provide motor force. Well, the next thing we're going to do is actually create a moving turbine system, and you guys have guessed it, we're going to be building the famous piston feed tape. We should see that all of our pistons will all start firing, and they are perfectly in sync. That is the way we want things. <laughs> what is so is this supposed to be some giant engine, like a nuclear-powered diesel or something, just shooting a bunch of pistons? work but for now i think we're going to place a lever down here and shut off the mechanism because otherwise that would drive me mad. <laughs> final details now first things first i need to place in a line of blocks going out from that redstone right there into the idea of using nuclear for propulsion i mean it's essentially drives an engine on a submarine or an aircraft carrier but those are again turbine driven rather than piston driven but I've never heard of anything involving, like, nu using nuclear power to drive pistons. <laughs> but, sure, why not? ...sides of our hoppers, and what that means is, when our control rods are extended, our hoppers will be shut off, which means that our turbine will not be moving, because, of course, the nuclear reactor is... Is the, is the piston supposed to represent a turbine? Yeah, I guess maybe they don't have turbines in Minecraft, huh? I don't know. So this is what we've created, <laughs> and we have now finished our nuclear power station, our nuclear reactor build, and I have to say, it looks absolutely fantastic. It does look really cool, and it is cool to see someone, again, this just looks like a base version of Minecraft, not a Minecraft expert, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that sort of stuff, but rather than using nuclear craft or something specifically designed for that, it's, it's really cool, I, I kind of, um, Kind of took me a bit to look at the analog between the uh, pistons and the uh, and what's going to be a turbine, but hey, it's a uh, it's a cool experiment. Uh, is it realistic? Um, he has some some concepts there. I mean, about how control rods can shut down a reactor. It's a very much a binary reactor in that it's either on or completely off. No, it's either at a hundred percent power or zero percent power, <laughs> which. <laughs> Doesn't exactly make the best uh, scalable reactor that can ramp up in power, but <laughs> questionable to have your control rods. It's basically control rods being the bread of your nuclear fuel sandwich. 
here. <laughs> Can't say I've ever heard of anything like that, but points for creativity there. This is definitely really cool. Currently, all of our control rods are extended. Our nuclear reactor is shut off. But when we flick this lever right here, everything retracts. All of the control rods have been retracted, which means that we have nuclear reactions happening. And that means that the steam is running through the system and our turbine is turning, which is giving us power. This was fun to watch. Again, I have a great appreciation when anyone tries to show anything nu nuclear related in a video game or popular culture that you clearly put a lot of work and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.